What's up, everybody? Hey, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is Phil from Zade Comics. I'm sure you guys know. Um, and I'm going to be doing some lettering today. And uh, I got to mute this first. But yeah, I didn't, wasn't really seeing anybody else uh, streaming. So thought I had to do some letters anyways. And I'd jump on here and do that for you guys. Um, I'm probably going to put the link out as well. See if anyone wants to jump in, jump in and just chill for a little bit. Uh, I tweeted this out, so if you guys are on Twitter, definitely uh, share that out as well. I actually got some books in. I don't know if I'm allowed to show one of them, because one of them is a CG creator that sent me an early book, but check this out. Got something sexy in today. Ordered this a couple weeks ago, and it finally came. This is the ABC Warriors, the Black Hole trade signed by simon bisley himself look at that oh my god it's a thick it's a thick boy uh all black and white and these i didn't realize these are kind of like in strip form it's like four pages at a time um look at that art and it's got that soft cover that patented zade comic style cover that everybody's ripping off um this is amazing. This is one of my favorite Bisley covers. So check that out. That's Joe Pineapples, Robot Assassin, Giant Gun, totally freaking 90s, man. Love that shit. Love that jacket. So sick. Yeah, so we're going to do some uh, some sick lettering today on the ash can. Just let me, uh, I guess we could pull this up. Starting on this page, we're lettering in Clip Studio Paint. EX, it says at the top here, but I'm going to uh, throw, let me see, where is this chat room? I'm going to throw a link out. I don't even know where the hell it is. Throw this link out somewhere. Uh, and we're going to put some music on too. So you guys have something to listen to. Let's use in the chat though. We got uh, Earthmind. What's up? Thanks for tuning in. Eddie Winkler, my man, should be hanging out with you. Uh, Next week, hopefully, that would be awesome. Pale Rider, of course, and the King Toad himself, JJ Ball. Heard Phil sex pot levels are getting too high for CG. He has to start a new movement just for hot creators. It's called Sex Gates. <laughs> yeah, let's work on that name, Joe. It sounds like a sex cult, which uh not that great. Uh, Metal Movies and Brewskies, what is up, bro? And Mr. Von Stugel, lettering something, something giant. And the bean pad, what's up, bean pad? Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you guys being here. Let's get some, um, some music going because I think, let me know if you guys could hear this. Uh, pop this up. This is my Spotify. And uh, Vasto has his Comics Wave album. I thought we could listen to that today. So this first one is from Death Sworn, the comic that hopefully will come out. I don't know if you guys can hear this. It might be too loud. But until some people start start coming in, I actually found the chat room. I'll drop the link in here. Hopefully uh, get some weirdos in here. Let me see. Hey, just lettering on my channel. If anyone wants to jump in and... Uh, hey. For a bit. And drop the link. Now, I, I haven't done a lot of streaming um, with lettering. I did it back in the day, I think for a little bit of Magic Cop. Might have done a tiny bit of the Lost Pages, but the reason I don't really have time to do that because I work a day job and I letter at nighttime. Um, and I'm usually watching other streams during that. Uh, so if you guys are into lettering, maybe you can get some tips from this. I letter all in Clip Studio. I know some people do it in Illustrator, but I think Clip Studio has great tools for lettering. Oh, bring the waves. Oh, you can hear the uh, typing. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm using my camera mic because my other mic is uh, messing up. So if you hear dog, dog barking, I apologize or loud motorcycles behind my house driving fast. 
I also apologize. Let me pull up my script here. And what I usually do for lettering here, I you know I have it all scripted out in the script, which is what um, you know the artist goes off of. So this is illustrated by Alan Alonzo, the Great Howl Comics, and. Uh, he goes off the script and just adds so much to the story from the script. Um, just goes above and beyond. Like I love the Easter eggs he does, like this uh, little sign back here, the witch crossing sign, <laughs> that stuff. Uh, and the cool story about this hot dog sapien cart, this is a logo that my brother came up with years ago. And we always planned to put this creepy hot dog sapien character into Magic Cop uh, as a villain. He was originally going to be in the video game. And uh, we, I found a place to be able to just drop him in here. This is the actual logo that Alan put into the page. So a little bit of backstory lore. Um, and what I'll do too is since I'm the letterer and writer, I could just change and edit things on the fly while I'm lettering. So there's a spot here um, where I'm going to add some dialogue. I just have to look up how to spell something. Let's see. Uh, Boob Dan is in the chat. What's up? Zaid Beats and Passion for Drawing. Can that music get any louder? <laughs> Do you want it louder? I know Passion's got hearing problems. But Joe wants the link. Yeah, give me a second here. Is it too loud? Because it's Oh, you know what? I might have to uh, reshare this because it's probably double coming through the the screen as well. So we'll do this. It should be quieter here because it's just coming through the mic now. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Save beats. Yeah, I'll send the link. Uh, give me a second, Joe. Pull up my... Uh... Okay, that's with a W... Instagram. Joe only uses Instagram to talk to me. I feel left out. Kinda is barely hear me. What mic is this coming through? Let's see audio. Alright. This mic should be better. Now you should be able to barely hear the music. There you go. 13 people in the chat. If you guys haven't yet, please hit that like and subscribe. Uh, might be doing these lettering streams more often now. If people dig them. It's cool. You get to connect to the fans while you're working on the comics. Alrighty, just gonna grab this line of dialogue here. And so this is the first page, you know, is for the for the Ashcan story. It was originally gonna be twelve pages, then we bumped it up to fourteen because I, I rewrote the ending a little bit to give it a little bit more weight and heart. I love putting, uh, you know, hitting the hitting the regions with the feels. That's what I try to do. Might be way too big. So this is a different format. Uh, size than my last lettering, um, my last page that I was working on, which is the pages for the main comic. So that's why this is huge. And then I'll have to pull in another page just to uh, just to get the right font size. And when new letters are starting. They're like, how do we know what size font to use? And do you, do you switch it up and stuff? Usually you don't ever switch, or at least I don't, the font size from page to page. Oh, we got an ad? God damn it. Elmhurst. Um, <laughs> I don't switch uh, font sizes up from page to page. We got JJB. <laughs> Joe Ball, what up, brother? What's up? How bro? you doing? Good man. Um, dealing with cranky, cranky <laughs> McGee over here. I, I don't know why she's mad at me, but she is. 
So, well, she is female. That's so. true. She's yeah. half me and female, so that's good enough reason to be angry. <laughs> What's up, man? How's everything going? Just taking care oh, not, of the kids today. Yeah, not not too bad. I I got one of them. The wife has the other. And, uh, oh no. <laughs> I guess that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got a live studio audience going here right now, Joe. Yeah. So uh, let's see. We got Baz in the chat. What's up? Hi. Hey, gay. Um, gay. I was the first to like this video. Thanks, bro. Yeah, let's get some more likes on it. So I don't know, Joe. Do uh, you think lettering on stream is interesting? I don't know. My daughter apparently hates us. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, I, don't, I mean, I'm sure it can be. I, I mean, you've got your, you got some, some synth wave, comic wave music going. Yep. You've got a gnar ass page up. Yeah. So I mean, I'd say all you need is a, um, I don't know, maybe like a stripper in the background behind you, <laughs> and the show will go through the roof. Dude, how cool would that be? I should get like a um, green screen with just like a strip club background with like a three D <laughs> chick dancing. That would be yeah. awesome. Gotta make that happen. Super chat for the stripper. They need to eat yeah. too, even though they probably shut and you don't want to get fat. You know what I'm saying? You're a stripper. Yeah. But, right, um, right, right. yeah. Uh, Amanda B says she's cute. I could hear I can't I came here for the baby. <laughs> came here for the baby. I would put my phone on the charger. There won't be no baby or no JB. So what have you been doing lately, man? Uh in the comic scene. Uh well, we just got uh re- done wrapping bullet maker uh probably about a week and a half, two weeks ago. I'm mm-hmm. um, doing a little bit of campaign stuff for that still, but the actual book itself is done. Um, I'm working on some stuff for Passion, some stuff for the next Mothman book. Um, I got a, a heap of commissions, too. You know, I got a berserk picture I'm excited to get to here that I'm doing for a fella. Nice. So it finally gives me an, an excuse to do a uh, berserk picture since I didn't get in on that berserk death action like everyone else did last week so yeah yeah that's sweet man yeah i'm excited you're gonna be able to do that uh commission that sounds like fun and yeah passion for drawing it's got you doing a a story for him huh yeah yep it's a i believe it's seven pages don't quote me on that i could be wrong but i think that's what it was and uh it'll go into his next uh his fantasy magazine he's working on that relates to the uh doom fate universe so that'll be pretty sweet i'm very excited about it because it's given me a chance to kind of like do some stuff i've been wanting to do with my style but i can't because it'll screw up like consistency of books i'm on mm-hmm. so i've had to kind of just stick to oh, oh no. all right so i'm going to check out brother <laughs> all right bro thanks for coming on all right i'll talk to y'all later bye chat right. can you say bye no you're gonna get mad all right i'll talk to you later dude <laughs> awesome Joe Ball, everybody. Joe Ball, let's start this music up. So what I'm doing right here is I'm, I pulled in a previous page that I lettered for the main book, um, and then I'm matching up the font size so there's consistency through my lettering between the Ashcan and the main book. Uh, let's see if there's any music left on here. Uh, yeah, the Transformers song. Let's see. Get some, uh, some gnarly synth wave going on here uh let's see matt is in here what's up matt thanks for tuning in i don't know if this is the first time i see matt uh in here he's a big fan of jay jay ball uh, yodam is in here as well dude yodam oh, did you hear i'm sure you heard we can't uh right now ship things to your country man which uh sucks uh just hire a chick off the streets yeah i mean you know if we get any more stimmies i'll be able to do that homeless dancing chick in the background they need to eat too. They need to eat too. So just going to match this up. The thing is I have to find a letter that is in here. Let's do the H. It's pretty good. There we go. So I'll stick with this uh, font size. All right. Jumping back and forth. We got Oliver in the chat. Guys, thanks for thanks for hanging out. We're doing some lettering. Got some music blasting. I sent out the link too. Um, 
And uh, if anyone, you know, like Passion, if you want to jump on or Boob Dan, just let me know. I'll send you the link. Uh, just chilling, listening to some tunes. And uh, this is a page from the Ashcan, the, the first page, actually. So this kind of scene, oh, speaking of Magic Cop, the Magic Cop theme song, everybody. On Spotify right now. So, yeah, this is the premise that I had kind of, um, you know, diving into that, the tropes from shows like Miami Vice. I don't know. I know Boob Dan would know because he's a big Miami Vice fan. Dan Plague in the chat. There's a, an episode where Castillo, the, uh, the head honcho uh, of the Miami Vice team, he his past catches up with him, and there's like this – Japanese gang from his past that he's got to take out and use a samurai sword and he goes off the books and this is kind of like an homage to that so you get a flashback story where Grey Wolf uh, is taking revenge out on um, these guys in, in the Japanese district of the city J-Town as we call it yeah. Yep. That's right, Yoda. Can't ship there anymore, brother. I don't know how how long it's gonna be. And that's funny because it took a long time for the lost pages to even get over there. Uh, yeah. Awesome panel. What country? Yeah, yeah. Yoda's got that. Sorry about the motorcycles in the background. If you hear that, Mass Effect has some sweet synthwave. Does it? I've never played that game. Everybody loves that game. What's up, Fenrir Fire? Uh, let's see what the next one is. Let's see here. So we're going to have to, oops, we have to make sure that this is the right font size. 18.8. .8. So when I do this, we're going to have to make it 18.8. .8. There we go. So I basically just cut and paste in my, my dialogue from the script and make it you know, cut it up so it's as small as possible. And usually, from my understanding or how I letter, when you're making a uh, an actual dialogue balloon, um, you want to keep it in kind of like a diamond format. So if you go from the first line small and then bigger and then biggest and then back down in a, di or in a diamond shape and then smaller and then smallest uh, to keep it in a round bubble. I think this song, this next song is from Magic Cup. Oh no, this is Monster MD. It also has the organs in it. So getting that bubble shape is pretty important. That can kind of take some time. You always want those. Uh, another thing for, for newer people that are lettering is you want a font that is specifically comic book font that you usually get from a website like Blambot. You can actually purchase the fonts from, from Blambot. I know Eric Weathers does the same thing. Uh, he has a plethora of fonts. And the important thing when you're to get a font like that is because you want a font that has all the letters in caps, basically, except for the I. And then when you do a shift I, it's actually capitalized I, and you only use those I's when you're saying words like I, you know, referring to someone referring to themselves. So just tips there. So this is, that's what that is. There's a lot of big words in it. <clears throat> I'll probably maybe take this out. Let's see, we got some people in here, man. Uh, Johnny Dingleberg, great name. Metal Movies and Brewskis. Baz. I don't think there's a J town in Miami. <laughs> this isn't my in Miami, Baz. It's in a, a town called um, Ambrosia, as you can see here. Ambrosia, the city of Ambrosia. It's basically, you know, our our version of Miami, though, in this magical world. Mm. And sometimes as well, it's good to uh, 
the bubble gets too big to split it up. So, what well, was my daughter's favorite? My daughter's favorite. Yeah, so I might split this one up. There's a lot going on in this panel. So, panel of bubble placement is important. Sometimes I get caught up on, you know, where to place things too early. It's better to sometimes just type this stuff out, get it on the page, then bubble everything, and then figure out where stuff's going to go. So I might do that uh, because streaming is probably – streaming while I do this is probably going to end up taking longer to do one page than it normally does. Let's see. Oh, Dan is free. Let me send uh, the link to Dan then. So he could scream friend at me. Hello, friend. Let's see if I could find him quickly. There he is. I know everybody loves Dan Plagle. Uh, good tip. Lettering, lettering's harder than it looks. There's a lot to think about when you're you're doing this kind of stuff. But it's it's fun because you get to look at pretty pictures all day. Uh, I never stopped ordering it. Let's see, I don't know about. It. <clears throat> we'll see. We'll come back to this one. So I'm just gonna right now just get all the uh, letters on here. Dan, I sent you the link on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So this song is the Magic Cop 2 song, uh, the theme for the Headless Hitman. It's a great song. By Vasto Vlad. You can check out his Spotify right now. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. We almost got 20 viewers on this lettering stream, guys. Yeah, so right now, you know, as you can see the Iggy right here. If you guys aren't familiar with Magic Hop, this is Ignatius Cromwell, a.k.a. Iggy Cromwell. He's our Magic Cop in Ambrosia right now. And his, his partner is old-timer veteran detective Grey Wolf Silvermoon. Uh, they're out on lunch getting some hot dogs. And uh, just a basic intro to what is going to be a flashback story that Gray is telling to Iggy. And, I mean, I just love how Alan just puts so much into these pages. All digital. He colors it himself. Uh, right down to this reflection in the car right here. Like, he didn't even need to do that. It's awesome. Um, and then, you know, the guy selling the hot dogs is a Frankenstein named Frank. You got this. Magic Johnson, Harlem Globetrotter trotter type guy. Little fairy, little pixie girl grabbing a, a hot dog that's bigger than her. And then this uh, roller skating elf chick, totally 80s. Look, listening to her Walkman. Yeah, it's it's just so fun, Amanda. Uh, she says great detail. Yeah, it like he just puts so much extra world building into a page it's so cool to see this stuff because it just adds to the whole atmosphere melding the the fantasy with the 1980s it's just so fun and it's like if you guys read the the lost pages he did the masquerade story which totally had those easter eggs in it as well uh of just adding to the world let's see uh This one might be a little harder here because Iggy talks first and uh, then Gray talks second. So if you guys did buy this book, um, this one, the ash can, read it after you read the main book because this takes place after the main book. 
So got Johnny Cage in the chat. What's up? Thanks for tuning in. Phil is lettering master. I'm okay. Uh, your magic cop version of LA should be fruit salad. <laughs> this is the sound of all the things you want. All right, I'll consider it. I'll consider it there. I will consider it. I don't know if I should. I'm not sponsored by GoPop, people. Spotify and their ad. I do not pay for Spotify, just like I don't pay for StreamYard. So you guys can notice a, um, a, a pattern here. I don't pay for StreamYards. I don't pay for Spotify. See, I, I kind of want to cover this. Um, this hot dog, you know, because I mean, look at that hot dog. Uh, I don't definitely don't want to cover his face. When you're lettering, you kind of never want to cover any of the main art. So what I might do here, you know, put a bubble, go into Iggy. And then what I, I like doing sometimes, it kind of looks cool, is I'll do a bubble and then the tail will go behind Iggy's head and end up here. So you'll read this one first, you know, you'll look at Iggy and then you'll read this one and then Gray is saying that afterwards. It's kind of a, you know, squiggly tails are my signature thing. Uh, she's a pixie of color. Yeah, I pre you know, I appreciate, um, she's a POC, pixie of color, Alan, understands what we have to put in these books, you know, to make things eclectic. Uh, what about? What's up, brother? What's up, brother? All right, let's see if this music's ready now. The Lost Pages song. Yes. I'm sure you guys remember this from the trailer. All right, what do we got here? Um... <clears throat> We're going to do an off panel. Speaking of Iggy, so this is fine. Hopefully, it's not too big, though. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Last night, I went uh, out karaoke. It was pretty awesome. Went to a <clears throat> an American Grill and Bar, had some salmon, some salmon. And a baked potato, which I was excited about. And uh, got to do some karaoke with my girlfriend. It was awesome. Sang uh, Living Color, The Cult of Personality. You know, people, I, I told this story last night on some streams. They didn't believe that I actually uh, had two people come up to me complimenting me on my singing. So they said I was lying, but nope. Two, two, two people. Two, I mean, two guys, but take what you could get, right? Two guys came up to me. One of them said I was better than the original song, so, you know. <laughs> I went to a Sizzler. <laughs> I've never been to a Sizzler. Uh, what did I sing? Yeah, I sang uh, Cult of Personality. Yo, Ichthyus, what's up, brother? Um, and Amanda says... Uh, you need to do a rendition for us, maybe at CGCon if we do that. And speaking of a man, about a man of enormous talent, here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Dan Plagel. Hello, friend. What's up? How are you? Good, man. Thanks for hopping in. What uh, what shirt is that? What shirt are you wearing? It's a Snoopy space shirt. Snoopy space. Yeah. Like the from Knott's Berry Farm. I dig it. Yeah. Went and bought a bunch of t-shirts and things. Amanda B! Amanda B! Uh, better than the original? Heretic. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't say that. I don't think it was. That song, I don't know if you heard Dan, that song Cult of Personality last night. Uh, I did. At, at karaoke. So, yeah. that song, um, has a long solo in it, guitar solo. So I was just standing there for a little bit. He didn't. Fun. He didn't do the air guitar. 
No. Yeah, I can't yeah. get down with that air guitar stuff. Come on. Yeah, everybody's liking the Snoopy space shirt, man. I like the Snoopy space shirt. They're loving it. There was uh, I went to Knotts. They had, here in California. They had opening day, sort of like coming back. And I went kind of crazy in like all the merch stores because they had all this like vintage merch based on old rides and stuff they don't have. And and then the Snoopy store had a ton of stuff. I still need to go back because uh, every like couple years I buy a new yellow zigzag shirt because mm -hmm. it starts fading out the zigzag. But uh, well, yeah, I know that shirt's pretty cool. I have a. Uh, I like it. Sure. Whoa! They put too much sauce on my sandwich. You have a sandwich? I do. Yeah. See, uh, it Skip says kick boob, Dan. You can kick me. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I can eat my sandwich in peace. What kind of sandwich is this? Spam and egg. Oh my god, that sounds horrible. It's delicious. Spam literally sounds like the worst thing ever. <clears throat> it's delicious, man. I don't know. Especially when it's grilled. Put a little little soy sauce on the bun. Good to go. Soy sauce? Yeah. What is soy spam? sauce on the bun? Spam is like like this particular one I'm I'm betting is like like uh, ground up like pork turkey and chicken parts. What? I thought it was fish, like a gross fish. No. Isn't it like Hawaiian? Like Hawaiians love that stuff, right? Yeah. It's because during the war they, they had a lot of it over in Hawaii. Because it was a uh, it was a, a product developed to give as rations to the military because you could yeah. can it and it would stay for a while. And then, like, Hawaiians got a hold of it and they put it on everything. Go with Hawaiians. Have you ever been yeah. to Hawaii? Yep. My, uh, my mom lives there part of the year. Really? Yep. That's cool. That's probably why you like spam so much. Maybe. She lives on Maui. She's moving there uh, permanently, though, in a couple years. How many islands is Hawaii? I think there's like... I think there's like Multiple? six. Like five or six. Chicken gizzard sandwich. <clears throat> All right, let's get some ones in the chat if you like spam. Twos if you don't like spam. Why do you got to shame my lunch, man? I just want to know. I want to know what kind of audience I'm dealing with. Who you know? wants to know? What I want to keep disrespecting spam if uh, everybody loves it. Hmm. You know? True. If it's beloved. Beloved? Beloved? I don't know if it's beloved. Okay, we got some ones in the chat. Uh, people like it. Uh, we got some twos. Uh, two times infinity. That's pretty big from uh, Ben Rear. Yep. Oh, okay. We're pretty, pretty even in the chat with spam. Uh, spam sushi. Oh, what? Yeah. Is that a thing? That is a thing. It's good. Because I love sushi. I love sushi, but isn't spam's not fish though? It doesn't have to be. I've had um, I've had chicken in a sushi roll too. I've never. I've always thought of trying that, but I don't yeah. even think I've seen that at a place. They make them like teriyaki chicken rolls. They're pretty good. Oh, that sounds great. I wonder if my brother would try that because he doesn't like fish. Yeah. Uh. Was this uh, Masubi from Hawaii? Okay. Yeah, Masubi, man. That's where it's at. This place, they make um, the Masubis too, but I got this uh, sandwich instead. Better than bacon? Ah, mm. I don't know about that, man. Possible close tie. I do enjoy bacon, though. All right, I'm going to split this up. 
what are you working on today? I know you were up late, uh, Dan. Yeah, I hung out for, with Billy as long as I could. I was like super tired. Nice. But I got all the uh, the Goblin Girl book is uh, three parts in the within the book, like plot line wise, I think, or at least how it was designed. Because I I did an issue and then I did a second issue, and then now I'm, I'm redoing those and like adding stuff to the story and everything. Uh-huh. And I technically come to the point where I'm I'm caught up with redoing everything in the issue one and adding the stuff that I wanted to add that would take place in that period. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and I'm going to ink all those pages. Um, but not do I don't think I'm going to do gray tones on them because I'm just going to do the the line art and then I'll I'll do gray tones later. Yeah. Um, once the whole thing's done. I think. Um, but I'm going to do those initial ones because I kind of want those to have those done for the campaign. All right. So when I, so yeah, so when I launch, I'll have those initial ones in there. And I have some other pieces that, that have, uh, I did some promotional pieces that are in the, the mailing list that I'm going to, I'm probably going to keep as like visual, like sort of things like here's other stuff to come, you know, like in later stuff. Um, and those are going to turn into like little mini prints for the campaign. So, but they'll help like at least show some of the other characters that aren't in the, the first uh, few pages or so that I've gotten done so far. So it'll, main, it'll mainly be Goblin Girl and like images of the fantasy world that she lives in. Yeah, if you guys haven't signed up for Goblin Girl, definitely do that, man. Yes, friends. Sign up now. Uh, let's see. I think more spam talk. Spam with cilantro. Um, sushi places. Yeah, yeah. Sushi's great. Yeah. Better than bacon. Yeah, that is blasphemy. I, I, I agree. I don't know how people would feel about that. I'm moving on from spam now to other food. I had some cereal for uh, lunch today. What kind of cereal do you have? Leroy was talking about cereal last night. I had some um, had some Rice Krispies. Oh, those are good. Some Rice Krispies with uh, some peaches in it. Dumped a peach cup into the Rice hmm. Krispies. That's interesting. It was good, dude. Is that like the kind that's got all the, the syrup in it and stuff? Yeah, I drain the syrup though. Okay, I was gonna say, I was like, wow, that'd be kind of crazy. Yeah, sometimes I'll drink the syrup. There's a lot of sugar though, but uh, but I'm I uh, drained it. I'm not an animal. Mm, I am. I got myself some Parmesan garlic wings, which I'm eating now. Oh. Keep getting messages. Let's see what's going on. Um, nothing really. Oh, did you see this, Dan? Mm. Okay. Oh, we got Michael Bancroft in the chat. Bancroft! I just had some rice bubbles. No one knows what the hell you're talking about, Mike. Rice bubbles. Bubbly rice in your bubble. Eat them rice bubbles. God damn, this ads are horrible. Mm. Uh, let's see these rice bubbles. Australia. What is this? <laughs> Look at this. Mm -hmm. This is what this is Rice Krispies. Mike, what are you, what is your country doing? I wonder if they all have Australian names instead of no, it's the same. They got look, snap, crackle, and pop. Mm. They just somehow look uh, more, more feminine. Mm. Rice bubbles. Has anybody else seen this? This is 
It's still Kellogg's. It's still the mascots as well. <laughs> no one says Snap, Crackle, Pop, Rice, Bubbles. That's not a thing. Snap, Crackle, Pop, Rice, Bubbles. Oh, God. It's Krispies. Rice Krispies. What is this world? Yeah, so I had some Rice Krispies with uh, peaches in it. With milk. Mm -hmm. I put milk in my cereal, unlike some people. Uh, don't yeah. do. I bet. I bet Michael uses water or something. I tried the water thing once when I was younger. What? Yeah. It was a mistake. Just had Wendy's. Mm. Wendy's is pretty good. So check this out, um, Dan. What are we looking? At? What I got in the mail today? I don't know if I did. Ooh, but it's signed. Yeah, dude, this was on eBay for like 37 bucks. Wow. And look how thick this is. This is like yeah. a... I had that. I think I had that exact book, but mine's got a different cover. because it's. I always wanted it. It's got... I no, yours is, this is probably newer. I mean, this is one of my favorite biz covers. I got it for the cover. Mm. And it has that patented Zig Comics, you know, rub, rub your face on it mm. um, cover. So, um, love it, dude. It's awesome. That I love that. Touch. It's amazing. And it's and I never read this stuff. It's like four pages at a time. It's like almost like yeah. strips. Yeah, because it was in a it's a collection of the of the story from 2080 magazine. Right, right. So they're like four so pages. That's pretty cool. Yeah, there's some Look at that. Out. And I, 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 I was flipping through this and he'll just do totally black backgrounds. I'm like, whoa. Mm -hmm. The beers, man. Yep. Kick ass. So I'm gonna have to read this. And that cover is just so good. So good. So good. So good. Let's see. Uh yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you guys haven't hit that like button, please do so. Smash it, friend. Smash it. Uh Bancroft surprise, I didn't lick the signature. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't believe me. I, I was looking at it. You know, I was definitely admiring the shine of the signature. Because it's shiny. That, that marker. Woo. Yeah, it's crazy. And that was the that was the only one I looked it up on eBay. It was the only one that was up there with that cover and it was signed. I was wow. nervous because it, it took a little while to get here, but I was nervous. All right, let's get back to letter in here. Let's see if there's any good music back on. Star Circuit people. Star Circuit soundtrack. We're Ooh. listening to the Vasto soundtrack. Star uh, I gotta awesome. make sure our brush size is at eleven. Because uh, if you guys haven't used Clip Studio before, it'll revert to what you have your settings at unless you manually change them. Great program, though. So now I'm just putting the bubbles on. We'll, we'll, we'll play some later. So you got to get the workflow going down here. Because I don't want to get hung up on placing one forever. What program do you use to letter in? Clip Studio Paints. Hmm. Program and all this stuff is built into the program too. So like this is uh, the basic ellipse tool, or if you wanted to as well, you know, like this is the rounded balloon tool. You could do the curved balloon tool, which would basically it gives you points that you could draw out, you know, whatever shape balloon, and have your letters wow. go in that, and, and then you could go back in there and move all the points so you could edit it really cool um and it's good for making like crazy balloon tails as well i love doing that stuff but uh like you'll notice if you've seen magic cop or if you read magic cop and then you read the lost pages i do a little different lettering techniques between those two books like for everything in Magic Cop, I'll use this rounded balloon tool, so it looks very uniform. Um, but mm -hmm. in stories like the silhouette, I'll actually use that curved balloon tool, so it looks kind of 
manually made and there's mm -hmm. like some imperfections on the balloons so it looks more like it was hand lettered in my in my mind that's what i think so. mm. just trying to make everything a little different know those faces man what'd you say Irons of those faces are so great oh yeah dude yeah and that's me right there on the right eating that sam that hot dog yeah he's so good at exaggerated expressions and stuff like that really carrying the emotion through the character um let's see just literally woke up well good morning what time is it over there uh bancroft if you're still in the chat Let's see what song is this? This is Death Sworn's First Hunt. Sounds cool. I'm gonna fuse these two balloons together in the future. That's why they're so close together. And then these need quotes on them. This one is a period. 620, 642 a.m. Why are you wake up that early? Because he's an early riser. That's crazy. Someone texted me. He likes to get up early and get get it done. Okay, my parents messaged me. We're going out for lunch. Would you like anything? And it's 342 in the afternoon. Like, Tell them you want a lobster that you could choke a bitch with. <laughs> it's just so it late. Too. It's not lunch anymore. It's going to be 4 o'clock. Very odd. Very odd. Indeed. Sounds like you have late night genes even in your entire family. That's usually not the case. Usually like my mom's like, uh, oh, it's four o'clock. Come and eat dinner. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. I'll have to change this now. We got Corey uh, Barton in the chat. Thanks for tuning in, bro. Hit that like button. Pretty good. Barton's up early too, then. Yeah, what's up with that? What does everybody in Australia wake up at six in the morning? Aussies are like, you know, land of the sunshine, man. They just like they only exist in the sunlight. That's weird. Actually, this should be. Uh, so what I do in um, Magic Cop is when people are speaking off panel or like in a different scene i'll color code their boxes to who they are oh yeah color code them boxes what do you think about that oh i love it i was i was just thinking i was like i was like i should hire phil to let her goblin girl really yeah you do better lettering than me that's for sure <laughs> thanks man like, it's, it's like, like one thing get better as you go. Yeah, yeah I guess. I was like those books that I I did before <clears throat> my original books that I lettered. I like I look at them and I kind of cringe at the lettering. Yeah, I mean, you, not, you should see this freaking my first. Like, this is the second comic I lettered. It's just so bad the lettering. This was uh, the original. I've shown this on screen, but the actual Ooh. letters in it are. I was. I think I was just lettering in Photoshop back then. That's how I do it. Yeah. I letter in Photoshop. Yeah, it's more or less. I mean that. Yeah, that more or less looks how my lettering does. <laughs> this guy's all bloody. Gross. Oh, that's the silhouette book then. Yeah, this is the old silhouette. Look, he's breaking this guy's neck with his shadow. That's kind of cool, Phil. 
you told me about that, and I, in my head, I envisioned it quite differently, the way you're describing it, and uh, how you were like, oh, yeah, I was like, you know. God, fucking Spotify. But, yeah, it's pretty good uh, photoshoppery with photos and stuff, literally. Back in the day. Back in the day. My freaking uh, Clip Studio is not saving now, so. I'm finishing off my delicious lunch. The third item is a Snickers peanut butter brownie bar. Oh, you gotta tell me how that is. That sounds good. It's, they're actually pretty good. I've had one before. They come in two little mini squares. Let's see. Just got up to want to finish colors on a page. Corey. And... Uh... Metal Movies and Roosters wakes up at 2 a.m. every day. Squares like that. Oh, that looks good, man. Mm. I think I'm going to go get some uh, Dairy Queen later. Ooh. God, I wish I could finish this page if Clip Studio would save. It's not saving? No, it's... Save your recovery information. So every, like... Hour it saves your progress. As a dog. So, uh, oh, there it goes. All right, let's get back to it. Finally. So yeah, I have to change these boxes to. I think it's this brown. Yeah, for Grey Wolf's color. And uh, he, Alan, just killed it on this last panel because do you put like a, do you put a highlight on the letters or do they just leave them on that brown like that? I usually leave them on the the background because it prints out like you could tell it apart. Um, we did that in um the first book, but. Yeah, this panel was, you know, him flashbacking to, uh, you know, his past. And he added, like, this, you know, VCR tracking scribble and the reverse, you know, symbol. Like, everything's going back in time mm -hmm. uh, to let the audience know that it's going to be a flashback. So, props to him. He just killed it on there. It's going to be so fun, the story. I'll be sick. Uh, start adding some tails here. Uh, and there's multiple tails you could choose from in Clip Studio. You could do this uh, spline, which is this is much too big right now. But you know, you could do a curvy little thing, which I love doing that. But Passion for Drawing thinks it looks like sperm tails because he's a weirdo. Kind of. Yeah, well, you know. Are all make, three of those bubbles the same guy talking? No, I'm going to be moving them around. They're just... Uh, okay. They'll probably be over here. Um, but I'm going to make this tail smaller. Uh, do a little something like that. And... Might do like this, and then that's fine. And that's fine. Uh, yeah, those details are making more me more excited for it. Oh hell yeah, Amanda! Yeah, it's all about the details. And in the first book too. Uh, we did something similar to this where all of the flashbacks actually pull the book out. All of the flashback sequences looked like they were old VCR um, pages. They had the tracking in there. So like here on this page is a flashback. So we put the, you know, the tracking here. We split the mm. RGB. So we could you can see the red split from the blue. Mm -hmm. um, and like a year after we put this out, I was looking at these pages and I'm like, I wonder 
what would it look like if I put 3D glasses on? And I checked it out, and it actually looks pretty cool because the background is, um, you know, the, the art is the thing that's split with the color, but the letter boxes aren't. So it looks like the letter boxes are popping are floating. away from the art. That's cool. And it was totally unintentional. Like, I just wanted to make it look like retro uh, mm. tracking and, and uh, VHS uh, screen. So did you, is, so is the line art like normal and then you distorted it, distorted it with something in the computer? Yeah. So I just threw it in the Photoshop, the finished colored page. And I made, I got to remember how I did this because I got to do it for this book again. Mm -hmm. um, so I split the image, I copied the image three times and then made one all the line art uh, red, blue, and then green, and then just split them apart from each other a little bit. So they were mm -hmm. laying on top of each other, just askewed. So those colors were shifted a tiny bit. Hmm. I'm going to go uh, drop these bones in the dumpster. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Right the back. chromatic aberration. <clears throat> chromatic aberration. All right, let's just see if I could get some more music on here without this ad blasting in my ear. Um, we're almost done with this page. We're just adding tails. Uh, this one is going to have to be... Uh, actually, I might be able to put it in a box above his head. Let me get back to that one in a second. Mm -hmm. See uh, Oliver's in the chat. Thanks for thanks for coming on, Oliver. Everybody, check out the Cryptidnals on Indiegogo right now. So what I'm going to do here is merge these layers so the balloons are connected, and then add a tail here, going up to Gray Wolf. And then this one, we'll need to do a little workaround for this one because in this panel, Iggy, the magic, magic cop, talks first and then Gray talks. So ideally, would have the first, you want the first person talking the closest to the left side of the panel. Uh, so you see them first, they speak, and then the other person speaks. But just the way that they're walking and stuff didn't work out that way, and that's totally fine. Uh, pretty cool workaround for that. Hopefully we can make this look cool. Isn't going to put the tail going behind, behind Iggy with some masking. And we'll see how that looks. It's a little extra work, but the cool thing about these tails is you can move each point on them uh, to make them bigger, thinner, curve in a different direction. And that's why I added some multiple points down here, some extra ones, so I could get it a little wider and get that uh, kind of turn into it. So it's mold it move it around and all this stuff will be covered to make it look like it is behind Iggy's head and we might want this a little I don't know we'll see how it looks once it's masked out and I like I like doing stuff like this it kind of gives extra depth to the panel because the ultimate goal for this right here is so the reader reads Iggy's bubble first and then jumps to this one, but the tail is still ending up pointing at Grey Wolf. Yo, Jaro in the chat. What's up, Jaro? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill Joe Ball. Oops. That one doesn't even matter because it's behind it. So how you would mask this is you just you know select this and there's your little create a layer mask. And what I would do first is make this opaque so we could uh, 
select the area we want to mask out. Oh, let's put some music on. The Testament soundtrack. Everybody uh, check out Testament. Live on Indiegogo right now. Joe Ball, who's in the chat, did a sick cover for Testament. Dan's not back yet. Yeah, I don't know. Do you guys, what do you guys think about these chill lettering streams? Because I'm all cut up, caught up with the letters for the main book. I'm just waiting for more colors and then I'll continue lettering the main book. And I thought, you know, th this story is 14 pages. So it's a short story. And I thought I'd, you know, get a head start lettering this bad boy while I have the time and uh, maybe show little tips, maybe get some people in here as well. So you guys can see. What do you guys think of the chat? Is that cool? Got some royalty free music or music by Vasto. So now that I've covered the area in this uh, like polyline marquee tool, I could just invert the selection, make sure I'm clicked on my balloon, put the mask, and then it makes it vanish. So it gives the illusion that the balloon tail is going behind the character. We could turn that opacity levels up. I might want to play with this tail here just to make it look better. And then this one too, like, uh, could do a little. What do you guys think? It just might need to be over. So you get that, uh... <laughs> I hope it doesn't look like it's going through his ears. <laughs> uh, Skip was reading about lettering this morning. I might try Clip Studio for lettering. I do mine in Photoshop. Yeah, I used to do Photoshop. Clip Studio like has built-in tools for lettering. It's such a good program for so many different things because you could draw in it, you could letter in it. Um, what I'm going to do here is uh, select the mask layer and then get rid of this white here. What do you think, Boot Hot Dan? Uh, it looks pretty good, risky. man. Yeah, it's going behind. Yeah, yeah. I just, while you were gone, I was explaining because I need the uh, Magic Cop to speak first and then Grey Wolf talks. So you'd read this and then his reply. So the only way I was able to, able to do that is, which I've done before, is make it go behind Magic Cop's head. What do you think? Uh, it doesn't bother me because you don't have a lot of stuff going on in the background, so it's pretty obvious that the, the line right, is from right. the balloon. Cool. Um, <clears throat> the only other thing you could do is put the other dialogue in that top right corner next to the other bubble and kind of snake it along kind of like behind his head down to the other character. Yeah. The thing is, I think really long tails look weird. Right. And putting it behind him kind of shortens that gap and doesn't make it look so obnoxious or, or weird. But I mean, I can always change this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I don't want it to look like it's going through his ears. Maybe I could curve yeah. it down below his ears. You know, which I could. Uh, let's see here. So, <clears throat> I could do that. I 
think of like con- that is they as they say is a conundrum. What's that? I said that is they they say is a conundrum. That might be better because it's coming like up into his mouth. Yeah. I was going to say either that or like if you had some way to like make it look like it was actually like sitting on the hot dog. (laughs) Yeah. Like he's stuffing his face and the words are coming out through the hot dog. But that's that would be a, a tight squeeze. Right. So you are all done with the previous project that you were commissioned to do? Correct. All I have to do is mail the pages out, which I'm probably going to be doing tomorrow. Nice. I've got them all wrapped up. I went down and I sourced how much it was going to cost to ship it. I'm going to do it a uh, FedEx box, uh, freight, air freight. Yeah. So it should get there pretty quick. Nice. We got a new viewer here, Admiral Wackass. Always wondered why you looked familiar on EBS's stream, then heard you and your brother used to work at the Galvin Ghost. Uh, got the lost pages a while back and looked forward to reading this and Magic Cup One. Thanks, thanks, man. Yeah, I excellent uh, friend. My my brother and I still work for the Galloping Ghost. So uh, yeah, thanks for following them and following us, being a part of this. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's doing some lettering today. And if you liked the lost pages, which you said you uh, you read that, we'll be doing another one. Another book, Lost Pages Volume 2. That'll be a drop in on Indiegogo after we ship this bad boy. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I've been, you know, in my downtime working on writing that, getting some artists lined up, and seeing some actual pages come to life. It's so awesome. So if you guys are interested in that, we have a sign-up for the Lost Pages. Let me uh, grab that link. I'll, the link's in the below in the, in the chat, but uh, below in the description. But I'll, I'll drop it in the chat as well. So if you guys sign are up now, that, friend. Sign up for Lost Pages Volume 2. Here's the link for that. Nasser says just drove by the galloping ghost the other day. Yeah, it's it. It's in your uh, direction. I'm there uh, Sundays, so I'll be there tomorrow. Sunday, Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Ali knows about the, the GGA. Yeah, dude, I've been working there for like nine years. I work on their productions team mostly, but I used to work at the arcade all the time. Kind of a big deal. You know, how comics in the chat. Nice letters. Yeah. How? Dude, Alan, everybody's been drooling over your art here. It's beautiful. All right. Let's try this again. Uh, let's mask this bad boy out and see if it looks better. I think I like it better. Not going through his ears. It's kind of you know going directly into his mouth. Thank you, Ollie and uh, Dan, for your, your tips here. Now this one I was gonna put as a bubble, but I might put it as a box because he's off panel talking. <clears throat> so we might get rid of this bubble. Let's see if we can split this up into a box here. He's got the same disease that I have, which is fills the panels with too much 
stuff. <laughs> that like to the point where like I don't want to cover that shit up. No, I think um so this panel originally in the script said there was gonna be no dialogue in it because it was just gonna be like him pondering. Oh. But I just switched it. I'm like, oh, we should have Magic Op saying something in here. So it's my bad, but we'll make it work. Um, right, yeah. Yeah. Because my scripts are usually pretty fleshed out with dialogue, you know? Let's see what this is. So, another advertisement. They're pretty fleshed out with dialogue uh, that I already know. But this one, you know, could switch stuff around all the time. Oops. I don't think this will be too bad. I'm in a box up here. So you got Eric in the chat. What's up, Eric? Thanks for, for coming in. Hello, Breast Daniel. <laughs> Breast Daniel, yeah. Breast Daniel, who's that, friend? Let's see, nice, I'll probably be- Is that my arch nemesis? Galvin goes sometime. I'll say what's up if I see you there. I still need to finish the Lost Pages probably this week or next week. Just finished reading Cyberfrog stuff. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, let me know what you think of the Lost Pages. That book is super fun to make. Um, and this would be... Uh, do a good crazy pink. What are you listening to, Dan? Uh, my dad is sharing the space with me today, and uh, he is he is listening to Fox News. That's the way to do it. And I've never. It's either it's either that or it's one news network. What, what, what news station you listen to, Dad? Is it is that one news network in there? Or is that Fox? It's Fox. Nice. Yeah, I never no. watch the news. But uh, my buddy that I'm streaming with, he could hear it, and he was like wondering what it was. Yeah, it's okay. It's no problem. He says it's no problem. He says it's not that loud. I, I turned my microphone down a little bit so it's not picking up as well as it was. Before. Here we go, Megan Fox. No, 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 it's fine. Dan, what do you think about this Megan Fox news? Mm. Sounds good. Does sound good. Is that like Transformers era Megan Fox or like yeah, 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 crazy like Tommy Gun or whatever the fuck that dude's name is Megan Fox or uh, Machine Gun Kelly? Yeah, Machine Gun Kelly. Do some of that. I like doing this too, where uh, a dialogue tail off of the edge of the page. Off the edge. I'm on the edge. He's gonna lose his edge. Living on the edge. Isn't that an Aerosmith song? Yeah. Some of that. Living on the edge. Da, 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 da. And then this one needs some quotes. So it needs an I here. Hmm. I always remember, guys, if you are going over your letters or whatever, editing, make sure all of the I's capitalized. Someone says, I walk my dog. You know, what would you call that? Even proper, the uh, proper even the eyes on like is and no no no. It's so like this like when it says after I was taken. So what, what's that I called everybody? Proper something I when you're speaking about yourself. 
you know, like in like in language when you capitalize I yeah. in a writing class. So I said this earlier, but comic fonts will have the capital I's with the T bars. Is it possess uh, possessive? Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. But also comic fonts usually will never have tittles in their lowercase eyes. The tittles is the dot above the I. Uh, it'll always be just a bar with no T bars, but when you capitalize it, it'll have the T bar. So unless they're boob down tittles. Yes. Those are the best tools. All right, this page is done, I think. I think it's done. Let's see who's in the chat here. Uh, yeah, no problem. Thanks for linking the mailing list. Yeah, uh, the other links are down below. If you guys haven't checked out the first Lost Pages, you can still grab it. We'll mail it out like tomorrow. And then uh, Magic Op 2 as well. Magic Cup 2, friend. We got Lola in the chat. What's up, Lola? Lola in the chat, friend. <laughs> Alan says, uh, instead of Machine Gun Kelly, it's Glue Gun Stanley. Oh, name. my God. Glue Gun Stanley. You want to show some Goblin Girl off? I'm going to post the link in the uh, chat. I'll probably what kind of Goblin Girl do you want to show off, friend? Whatever you want to show off, man. Give me a second. I'm, I'm just inking a panel. Yeah, show something off. We'll get the people excited. <laughs> Damn it. I keep dropping my water bottle. Yeah. I do original art. I do that all the time. Oh, that, I don't do that all the time. That's bad. <laughs> Whoa. God damn it. Disavow the destruction of artwork. Let's see, uh, let's see some art, Dan. All right. You want to see what I'm working on? Yes. Goblin girl. Goblin girl, friend. Uh, I'm getting kind of hungry. You are? Yeah, not for spam, though. Spam, spam, spam. Delicious spam. Yeah. Show your damn art. I'm trying to adjust my camera so you can see it. Because it's, it's like all like crazy. Baby. Window. Sharon. All right, I'm sharing it. Oh, okay. Oh, you can do double share. Look at that. Yes, friend. Look at that. That's cool. That's from your, what is this? Out of your phone? Uh, no, this is my my top down like drawing camera. It's awesome. Give it a little more light. Show that page next to it, that big one with the demon head. Oh, the the uh, the goblin king photo. Yes, yeah, the goblin king. Goblin king, friend. That's there so cool. Is. Awesome detail, great rendering on those horns. Yeah, I went in and I I buffed out these guys up here on the top a little bit so they. They pop a little more. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, this is the Goblin Girl. Uh, the link I just dropped into the chat, guys. If you're interested in this, uh, kind of, we'll talk about it a little bit. What's the basic premise of the Goblin? Uh, so here's the the cover. Mm -hmm. So more or less, the premise is the Goblin Girl, and uh, she's a she's kind of a a uh, can't think of the word right now for some reason. Now that I'm trying to explain it. It's basically a like a dark fantasy sort of story uh, about a character that is the Goblin Girl, and she was a like part of a prophecy that she would she would be the end times for the Goblin King and, and his his empire. So they locked her away in like a dungeon, and uh, and then. Well, actually, they initially they lock her away in the dungeon because she's unattractive to them. She's the most hideous thing. Idiot. So they locked her away because they didn't want to kill her because she was also the progeny of the of the king. But when she was locked away, after a few years, there was a they, they have like a 
I don't know, like a witch or a, a shamanistic witch or whatever she is. She, uh, she, she got a, a, a uh, she got a vision that, that she was going to, the goblin girl was going to end their, their kingdom and kill the goblin king and like all this other stuff and end this legacy. And so he basically hired, got the, uh, got the, the caretaker who is Rathul. Um, it's this, uh, big gnarly guy here in the corner. Crazy. To, yeah. yeah. He, he's kind of been the guy that's been her keeper. He's like one of his like, you know, super badass ultimate soldiers. So like, like he's, was supposed to be keeping her completely secure. Nothing would happen to her, but locked away. And he basically tells him like, look, I need you to go down there and I need you to kill her because, uh, there's this prophecy and we can't let this happen. So he goes down there to, to get rid of her. And, uh, the problem is, is he's almost like raised her like his own child. Cause he's the only one that, that fed her, like spent any time with her. Like since she was a baby, like he is her keeper. Yeah. And, uh, so he goes down there and uh, he has a change of heart and uh, he decides he's not going to kill her because he, he just can't do it. So he decides what he could do is he could let her, let her go and tell her like, you know, you know, run, like get out of here. Right. And um, in the process of, of her trying to like get out of there or leave or whatever, she actually decides like, she's not going to do that. She's, She's tired of the way she's been treated all this time. She's gonna, she's gonna break some windows on the way out, friend. Yeah. So uh, she sneaks into this this goblin vault that uh, the goblins have like stored all kinds of magic artifacts and various things from time past or whatever inside this vault. And uh, so she goes in there and loots it, and, and uh, she ends up stealing a like a like a pouch that's kept by one of the the keeper is one of these like uh, guys that monitor the the vault or whatever. And in the process of doing that, she steals this sword, which is a like like a super weapon, basically, and uh, goes on a rampage. And she's like, you know what? She's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna take my revenge, sort of thing. And uh, so, in the process of deciding that there's a prophecy and we need to like end her. They've actually ensured the prophecy by setting her loose, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> so she she does that and escapes. She's gonna kill and everybody. She's gonna kill everybody. It's gonna get violent. And uh, she ended up escaping and going to the uh, the the world above the uh, the the land from a long time ago, you know, sort of thing. And uh, what is what is what is going on there though, on top side, the reason why the goblins have gone down and locked themselves away is that there was a mass sort of cataclysm that had happened because of, of a magical event. And the world had like got tilled. It like it was like wrath of God sort of thing. Like everything got destroyed. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of fantasy car- creatures and stuff are like either dying off or have died off. And, um, so and then most of it's like in ruins you know there's not really any major kingdoms or anything like that left it's like it's it's almost like mad max uh fury road you know but without the cars and stuff yeah. it's medieval style and so they go up there to to try and um uh live a life or do whatever they can um but they find the world is very like topsy-turvy to like what it should be sort of thing and uh but because of her using some magic items and stuff from the vault to escape, she actually awakens all the fantastical stuff that is laid dormant all this time that had been nullified. And so there's a lot of uh, evil things as well as wonderful and good things that now like spring are coming back to life into this world that she's moved back into. So she meets up with a bunch of people that were, uh, people that were orphaned or, or, uh, went on vision quest things or whatever, because like, you know, either their, their kingdom was destroyed or they did terrible deeds in the past. And, and now they're kind of wandering the earth, like Kane and Kung Fu, you know, trying to help people and make amends and, and find a way to exist 
uh, now that the world is far different from where, where they originally were because of this cataclysm thing. And so it's kind of a little bit of like a team sort of thing where they, they wander around and, and help people to make money and, and, and for food and stuff. And, uh, and then there's, there's like a subplot also going on with the characters, which is kind of long winded to explain, but, uh, it will be in the book explained, but yeah, so that's, that's more or less the plot line. It's kind of, a tale of 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 uh, a moralistic tale of of good versus evil and uh and blood and guts blood and guts and gore and, and boobs friend yes that will be yeah boobs. and that's what eric said uh it says just say it's about boobs yeah it's boobs post-apocalyptic post-apocalyptic fantasy about boobs those darn tricky prophecies yeah man. i trick people with the boobs and then like you know give them a story at the same time it's like a it's a twofold thing yeah it's how you lure them in right <clears throat> yeah exactly you're like, a, like um, elvira style marketing you know like a regular old bill cosby over here that's right that's right i slipped some story into their drink exactly you slip the story yeah and they fall for it and hopefully some some uh some great visuals to go along with it yes like man great. dude and you're Enjoys. doing like, um, are you doing your tones in there for every page too? So this is the deal. It looks yeah. like potentially I'm going to be doing a gray toned like line art version as well as a color There's book version. Two versions? Yes. Um, the <sighs> color might be a uh, stretch goal a la fiendish style where uh, I'm going to see like how much the book can make to get the color to happen. Um, yeah. Because uh, I want to hire my buddy Matt uh, Yaki, uh, famed Marvel, DC, Rob Liefeld, Glenn Danzig's Veronica colorist to uh, color my pages. Because he's he's always colored everything I've ever done. But anything I've ever done book-wise that has needed coloring, that isn't been something I colored myself, Matt has colored it. Uh, covers, uh, interiors, like all, all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's kind of like I was wanting to hop back on with my old uh, partner. Um, nice. So, yeah, so that's, uh, we're going to hope that's going to happen. I think the color will happen, so I'm, I'm probably just going to hire Matt. Um, I'm going to try and send him over this cover and uh, get him going on that so they can have that for the campaign launch. So, uh, at, at most, for sure, there will be a Matt Yaki colored cover on this project. So that's uh, for oh, yeah. sure happening. That's awesome, man. Yeah, everybody sign up for Goblet Girl. And uh, now those are some tittles. <laughs> These ones here? Those are the tittles we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, big old Tiggins. Mm-hmm. Two gold. There's a good yeah. shot of Rathful right there. Uh, oh, yeah, look at that hump. Yeah. It's this lovely lady hump. I can't wait for this book, man. Uh, I'm so excited yeah. that you're putting it out. Everybody sign up. It's going to be great. Uh, it's going to be I'm cool. Probably- Probably gonna take off here. Um, sure. Here's the finished. I think this is where we're gonna go with the page. While you were talking, I, I did some little edits to this. Oh, ah, sneaky! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as you can see, um, we got uh, just the intro to the ash can, and we're going going back in time. I did mm. this one here so you, the reader, would read this first. Jump down to here, and then these little flashback narration boxes so right hopefully that looks good because i think that just the really long ones that's why i throw the curves into there it kind of i don't know gives you something to look at so just a, just a giant strip right so uh, hopefully that looks good i'm, I'm digging it it's fun stuff yeah. great page shout outs to alan everybody follow alan uh, we're gonna be working with him for a long time i'm mean, gonna uh, we got awesome. uh, it's gonna be doing the next mass, mass read book as well Nice. Titillating. Yes, friend. Goblin Girl sign up is on my links doc. Thank but, you, friend. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I dropped the, the link for you, uh, Eric. Yeah, Eric's a great mod. Uh, he is. All his links pulled up. Edwin is in here. We're just wrapping up, Edwin. God damn. The ace. Check out the ace. I got some cool ace stuff in. I don't know if he wants me to show it, though. Uh, mm. Finger guns. 
And uh, I gotta get some stuff in the mail to Edwin. I got some artwork for him. Yes, yes. I got some stickers to put up from Edwin. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I know we had some no more music. The music album is done. Check out that comics wave on Spotify by Vasto Vlad. If I could X out of this uh, thing, there it is. Comics Wave Volume One. Comics Wave. And uh, yeah, we'll, sh we'll show it off Monday, Ace. But until next time, guys, let me know uh, you know what you think of these streams. I might do more of these these uh, lettering streams. If you dug them, then go on Twitter. Let me know. Post in the chat. Put a comment down below when this video goes up as a, a video. And we will see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.